Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we have a study session. Um, it is for proposed ordinance H-18-07, which is marking city-owned vehicles with the city seal. Council Chair. Councilman Muscat. This was moved to, st uh, to a study session because I believe the police department had some issues with it. And uh, with that statement, I'd like to ask the, the police chief to elaborate on what the problem is so we, I can better understand what he's thinking, if that's okay. That's fine. I think that's perfect. Can I ask, uh, sure, we, last time we met, there were changes, I think, made. Uh, the only copy I have of this proposed ordinance is the original one that went on the agenda. Is there a revised one? There was one that Mr. Miyaki wrote. I do not have a copy. Uh, I don't the one they passed out today? Is that? Oh, this is the one they passed out. Here's a copy of the 23rd. We, we, I wanted to get a copy to all the department heads to get input, but we didn't get this. Because I think this is public. It was on agenda. It's, it's on the agenda on that was agenda. sent out to all the yeah, department it's heads. It's stamped. Yes. Yeah, it was, was sent to all the department agenda. heads on October 23rd. Ordinance. Okay, okay. Yes, it was sent on October 23rd with the agenda to all the department heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm, I'm telling you that it was, I think, revised. No, no this is the, the revised one. We, we, we didn't one revise set. it at all. This okay. was the same one that, I my original one was revised from <laughs> by Gary Miyake. Okay. To better fit the proper format okay but well, let's continue then. okay yeah because by the so time we made it to the meeting the actual revised one was the one that was sent was out with everybody's read. agenda was back read and was read one, too yes. go ahead please so the word uh, so we're going to have the plan words <clears throat> um section one let's see uh a b c uh under c section one vehicles <clears throat> used exclusively by the city's police department for undercover and traffic control operations period shall not be included under this exemption if it was ever used by any city employee elected official department head for purposes other than police department undercover or traffic control operations so the way i'm reading that is that only cars that are for undercover operations and for us being over undercover operations is somebody who's dressed in is assuming the identity of something else of you know not, not a p visible police officer or the traffic control enforcement where the cars are playing mar or are playing with only emergency lights on it for traffic enforcement and I understand your concern, I, I truly do. And the way you put it that way, and in my original, original one, I had police vehicles that are exclusively used by the police department. So anything that you guys exclusively used, you have the control to mark or not mark. So then that, that addition is not in here. And, and and I could I could I could ch we could we could change that because if that was the only concern you had I agree with you you as a police chief should have exclusive rights to say I want to mark this car or that car as long as it's used only by the police department yeah this oh, was written up by Mr. Miyake and he might he he gets you know technical sometimes and I think it just it, it, that's yeah, what it was and, supposed and, to mean and in my original one I, I had that it exclusively used by the but police department. This is what we got. I, I well, totally agree Miyake with did. you 100%. I, and, and I don't believe, I know I wouldn't, and I don't believe anybody sitting here or future people that would sit up here would take that right away from the police department. Well, we just go by what's on the four corners. And right, I'm right. Sure and we, we note can, that, I'm and sure I agree can, with you. We can change that, that will say exclusively used by the police department and only by the police department. Because that was my intent, okay, that, okay. that any car that, you, that the, you the police department owns, okay, and they're the, they're the only ones that use it, then you should have the authority over that as a police chief. And I think that's simple. Would, would that suffice, chief? Is that, well, that would, 
Yes. I mean, basically, was... it would be left up to his discretion or future chief's discretion. Correct. Yeah. Police okay. department in general. What about the fire department? Well, I don't understand why the fire department has, it, has any concern with that. Because uh, we lost a case in arbitration the last time some council members tried this, and they took us and we lost uh, because of vehicles they take home. Well, I understand it, Mr. Mayor, but the thing is that the vehicles belong to the taxpayers. And if they want to take them home, that's fine. But taking them home, having a sign on them says, doesn't mean you can't take them home. It just has the seal of Dearborn Heights on it or said Dearborn Heights <coughs> Fire Department. That's got nothing to do with taking them home or not. So one of the other issues about marking cars that go home with people that are on call is... What's are, the difference? What, well, I, I'm just talking about... If you change that for the police department, I understand that. But uh, I think uh, Director McIntyre has an issue where he was able to respond to the scene and his truck was unmarked. And when he got there, he saw what was going on and he was able to take action. Um, you kind of limit the ability for people, well, well that's you know Mr. McIntyre's issue about the fire department. Uh, the fire chief might be on his way. There was some. He's issues. not coming tonight. I've I've, I've got a letter from him. We, we yeah. got if the we email from him. him. Okay. Yeah. But we my concern what is what what does a sign have to do with you doing your job or not? What's what? It kind of gives car. you credibility. <clears throat> no, I'm not talking about a police okay. officer. Is Everybody so, else. So if, if okay. you expect those people to do to enforce ordinances, <clears throat> if they sh if there's a police car driving around, people will tend to stop doing what they're doing and or a marked vehicle stop doing what they're doing if they're breaking the law they will try to hide whatever they're doing they if can't prevent well I, okay at this point well, yeah, he, well, well we got a point of, wait wait but we got to get some to all that. right let's get some but point I have of order a response here to that okay and uh, then. The, the thing is is we have other ordinance vehicles that are marked ordinance on them so you're telling me they can't do their job either, then? Well, I, if, I'm, if you're talking about ordinance, I'll be glad to answer. Yeah, well, we, you know what? We'll do ordinance. Uh, so let's just deal with the police department because that's your expertise. So, uh, so marked police cars are good for certain types of enforcement. Correct. Unmarked cars are good for other enforcement. You'll never get an argument out of what you need to so, do with your police cars. I mean, I, I don't want to argue other departments. Right, right. Position. That's not. But, you know. Seeing cars parked in certain places make draw undue <clears throat> attention to them. Okay, we have and, um, Councilman. That's you won't get an argument for police cars Councilman out of me Abdella, ever. Okay, at this All point, right. we have Councilman Abdullah has something to say. So, um, I was thank you. Um, we received all of us an email. It was a late email, uh, but I just happened to catch it before I walked in here um, from. Uh, Fire Chief Dave Brogan. So I figured, uh, but I got permission from him to read this before I did. I called him and I said, look, uh, it's, this is this is all fine and dandy because he couldn't be here. But I said, do you mind if I share it and read it? And he said, that's fine. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to try to read it pretty Thank quickly. Um, Honorable Mayor and City Council, I recently had a schedule issue that will prevent me from attending tonight's study session concerning marking city vehicles. I was intending on sharing my thoughts then, but will do so in an email as I won't be at the meeting. The, this is the affected vehicles that would be affected in his department. There are only two vehicles not marked, and that would be the police, I'm sorry, the fire chief and the deputy chief vehicle. Usage. Both the deputy chief and I, which is the fire chief, are on call 24-7. Because we cannot know when we will be responding to a fire or other emergency, I use a city vehicle on select occasions when I'm off duty, specifically when I will be in the area, meaning the Dearborn Heights area, and able to respond. All my gear, my radio, command board, etc. are in my vehicle. These are essential tools for my response. For example, I took a vacation day yesterday, uh, being Monday. However, I came in for a good fellow for a good fellows meeting. And he's the president of Goodfellows. Is he? Okay. Yeah. I came to my office around three o'clock. I worked on a few a few things. Stopped at Target, then went to City Hall and intended to go to the meeting at seven o'clock. At five fifteen, we had an apartment fire at Carriage Park. Because I was in the vehicle, I was able to respond to the fire and oversee safe operations. Perceptions. And there's about three more little paragraphs here. An example listed from yesterday, people would not question seeing my vehicle at an apartment fire. They might question seeing my car at Target 
or any other personal stops I might have made as this was a vacation day. There's, the result could be phone calls to myself, the mayor, or council members, or social media posts to report having seen a vehicle somewhere and wonder why the fire chief was at Target, which is legitimate. Another example would be the few hours between the end of the workday and a council meeting. So this would be like a Tuesday example. I do not go home between the two. I get odds and ends done at the station or take care of personal business and run a few errands. Again, this would be in my, c in my city vehicle. I am in the area and free to respond. But a citizen may wonder why the fire chief is doing personal business in a city vehicle. They may even falsely believe I am on city time while handling personal business. The end result can be unnecessary bad feelings from the public who may not understand the scheduling and logistics. I should mention that personal business is a rare occurrence. We are not, and he puts it in quotes, hiding the vehicles by not marketing marking them. We are simply not drawing undue attention to them. I do not want to spend unnecessary time going over schedules, reviewing time off, nor do I want people to get the wrong impression seeing a vehicle where they may not expect it. There's also security and litigation issues. Keeping with the above examples, having the vehicle marked on, I'm sorry, marked, can potentially draw attention to thieves who may recognize it as having expensive equipment inside. There is also a chance of litigation if there is a minor accident and it is marked as a city vehicle from someone looking for a lawsuit. Ethics. I want to point out that both the deputy chief and I have our own personal vehicles. We use these vehicles when we are off duty and home. Typically, once my vehicle is parked for the weekend, it stays there unless I go from, uh, for a work-related event. There is simply no abuse of the vehicles by the deputy chief or myself. By the way, myself being the fire chief, not me. They are used strictly for work with the exceptions mentioned above. And in conclusion, I see potential for unnecessary headaches, negative perceptions by making the vehicles uh, marked, and few advantages. For these reasons, the vast majority uh, of chief vehicles in the area are not marked, and it is my recommendation that these vehicles remain unmarked in our city as well. Signed, Chief Dave Brogan. Okay, thank you. Mm, Madam Chair. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Uh, thank you for reading that. I did call uh, Chief Brogan after reading the email, and I, I had stated, you know, certainly I appreciated his email. I did want to add that it, you know, some departments, and we don't see this with our Dearborn Heights firefighters or our police that I have re recollected, but um, it's not uncommon to see a fire vehicle. I've seen fire trucks, by the way. I'm not going to name the community, but they're at Kroger's. And what they're doing is they're buying the food that they have to serve and cook for the people who are working in the fire station. My son's a firefighter. He's there for 72 plus hours straight. So let me move on. I'm um, talking about perception. Again, um, I think Chief Brogan is up and up on that. For you, with the police, um, the, you know, I'm glad you clarified, by the way, which is why we asked for the study session to clarify. So thank you for that insight. I do want to say, though, that your unmarked cars should be exclusive to the police department, police personnel, for that assignment, right? Whether it's un undercover or whatnot. Exclusive use for the police department, for police business. That's all I want to say with that one. Okay. Now, the last thing I have is, um, I want to be really clear about this. We're talking about taxpayers' dollars. They, the taxpayers who we are all accountable for, and two, right? That's what we do. That's what this body does. We're the stewards. So therefore, we're simply wanting to account for those tax dollars and feel it is in the best interest to have the cars labeled, other than the exemp exceptions, right, that we just talked about. I think it's important to have it done. This was passed by a resolution, and now we've spent money on attorney fees to get an ordinance. Resolution is a l legislative action that should have been all it took to get this done to move it forward, and I will tell you the reason reason I supported your resolution, Mr. Uh, Councilman Muscat, was because, if you recall, <clears throat> and it may have been a year, maybe two years ago, there were residents in Dearborn Heights that had home invasions, people at their doorstep. 
come in their home, they said they're with the water department, they're this, that, or the other, simply by marking your vehicles, and except for the exceptions with the undercover, that would have helped prevent somewhat, a little bit, um, as far as those things possibly happening. My last thing I'm going to leave you with is I don't understand why we're, we're even having to do this because where's the harm and the objection? Why are we objection, objecting so much to something that's important for our residents? Safety as well as taxpayers' dollars. Sure. That's all I have. Councilman Abdullah? So I agree with you on a lot of these things, but at this particular point, at least with these two departments so far, and I agree with the rest of the council people here, I, I, I don't believe in personally micromanaging the police department on this type of I stuff. I, I, I totally agree with everybody that we should leave that all completely to the chief. But as far as the fire department, reading this email that he sent us, there's only the fire chief and the deputy chief that are using unmarked vehicles. And I, I'll tell you, for me, it's pretty convincing, The especially from somebody as honorable as our uh, fire chief. Um, these are pretty convincing points that he's got here. I and I know when I spoke with him at one point, um, he mentioned that sometimes, like you just mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, he may be stopping by to pick up food or sure. whatever. Sure. Or, or he may be off work on his way home. You know, he gets off work five, six, seven, whatever it happens to be. He drives over to his house, which is a little bit out of area, and if he happens to stop by Target to pick up milk on the way there, me personally, it doesn't bother me. For all the things that he does for us, it doesn't bother me that he happens, that he happens to stop there. Now, if he takes that same vehicle and drives to Iowa, yeah, I've got a problem, obviously, with that. Sure, sure. So right. That being the case, which departments, and I just want to get a clarification, so that we're dealing with specifics, which departments are an issue at this point? As far as I'm concerned, everything is an issue to me because I, I have received email after email, <coughs> phone call after phone call about I thought I saw this here. I thought I saw that there. And I'm not talking at Target. I'm talking about Toledo. I'm talking yeah, about that's Irish not acceptable. Hills. Yeah, that's I'm talking about Livonia at 7, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock on a Saturday night. There should be no reason to say I thought I saw. It should be mm -hmm. I did see. What? Okay. You know what? And this is this is the situation we get into. Everybody marks their vehicles. Even the President of the United States has a seal on his car, stating who he is and where he's from. And if it's good enough for him, why isn't it good enough for a fire chief in the city of Dearborn Heights, or an ordinance officer, or a, a water department? You know, okay. as far as my and even the mail has a marked. We have vehicles marked. The state of Michigan marks all their vehicles. Heck, the state of Michigan now is requiring all their cars to be GPS. Yeah. Okay, so they know exactly where their vehicles are 24-7. Not that I didn't go there. Oh, yes, you did go there. That's the point that I'm trying to make. Well, another thing, too, is all these cars have government plates on them. So when they see them at Kroger and they see a government plate, I think it gives it more credibility if they see it's the fire department, because mm -hmm. between you and me, when I see the fire department at any of the different businesses, I know they work, what, 72 hours. Sometimes they have errands they have to run. They have to run to the post office, and that, that's understandable, mm -hmm. especially Kroger's. I've mm -hmm. seen those guys in there shopping a lot. Um, and as far as breaking in, all the vehicles are insured. Oh, I was talking about homes. Well, you yeah. know, no, it, I mean, it's oh, st stealing the equipment out of the oh, I'm sorry. Okay. cars. If it's marked, okay. somebody may be more apt to break into the car. But, 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 but the thing is, if you've got a police car that's marked, there's, there, there's, a, there, there's expensive equipment in them, too, so they could break into that, too. Uh, I mean, it works to both ways. stupid to break into a police <laughs> yeah. car, well, but, uh, although it does it's, happen. It's stupid to break yeah. into a fireman's <laughs> a vehicle, too. Okay? Yeah. And it probably happens. But having it to say that one vehicle is more susceptible than the other just because there's a marking on it. I, the only one I, I, can't see. I can justify is the police department. Everything else across Mark, the board should I just be marked. The police department should be completely excluded. Uh, they need to do their job uh, incognito there, okay? Yeah, there's certain times that they do not want to be known, and it, it would put them at risk. too. But mm -hmm. there should be no reason for someone to say, I thought that was a uh, DPW vehicle, or I thought that was an ordinance vehicle, or I thought I saw the mayor, or I thought I saw this. You should know that you did. You or, should know you did. Or it could be from a different city. If it's not marked, then we know it's not ours. Correct. We, I've seen vehicles that are, are look just like Mr. Mayor's here. Identical. Okay? And it's not marked. Okay? So they're out there. And they've got the, they've got the municipal plate on it. 
Right? I don't know what the plate number is. And neither do a lot of people don't know what the plate number is. So they're going to only assume. But if there's a sticker on it that says Dearborn Heights on it, they know. Okay. Or if they see it and we can ask them, was there a sticker on the door? And they say no, then we can definitely say it's not ours. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, and it's so not it's a big ways. deal if somebody goes to the grocery store. Madam Chair. Madam Councilman Chair. Abdullah. Go ahead. If I may just ask, so which I, I, I know um, our department had Jack here had something to say, so that's fine. Right, we're but which him. other departments, uh, Mr. Mayor, could be affected by this? DPW, aren't theirs all already marked? No. No, they're not. No. No, they're not. Uh, In other words, which departments have vehicles that are not marked? It, it, it is uh, department heads uh, generally do not have their vehicles marked. <clears throat> and um, some of the police vehicles, it's well, police are already on fire, but I'm talking about well, right. I'm police trying to, oh, okay. Uh, and my vehicle's not marked, and I don't know of any other. Uh, I think DPW has some trucks. Kind of DPW, DPW has, has their F-150 trucks not marked. Who is recreational and, and and CDBGs aren't right. right. Recreation doesn't and, have the van marked but that, either. That's the department head, I think. Correct. Right. 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 And those we will and, mark and now. If I may ask, are those all allowed to take it home? No. So they all park them back in the city somewhere. Anytime you want to look, the recreation vehicles parked exactly. at the campus. Yeah. yeah, it's always so there. It's only used during uh, the day, so to speak. They cannot take those home. We went through this once before, and that's when I we ended up with this um, arbitration uh, by the fire union. So I'm just trying to clarify. So at this particular point, the, the cars are of issue as the department heads. And certain um, uh, ordinance departments, is that correct? Or is there any other ones? No, oh, just he's department. a department head. Head. Well, what is the No, no, I know, the, I know his, so but I'm bank. saying, is there any other ones? Wait, wait. Because I know Ray had mentioned something about some ordinance vehicles. Is there any other ones that are unmarked or just yours, Jack? So at this particular point, are we talking about just four, five, six department yeah. cars that are not marked yeah. and the mayor's? Any other ones? Just depart any the other city I'm trying to clarify. We've, that's we've got I mean, meter reader cars heads that are all marked. And, and some supervisors. I'm okay. sorry, I need the first part. Department heads. And some supervisors. supervisors. Yes, we do want you to talk yes, a Yes, you will Please. have your right. I was, I was answering her. Okay. Right, right, but we need quiet here. Okay, so there's one in the building department. Right. We were just talking about. Okay, because we're going to have you come up after okay, and, Chief and, and it's down. just those. And I don't understand what the big deal is, why somebody doesn't want their car marked. No, but what I'm saying, though, uh, Councilman, is if they're not going home afterwards, is the issue in between? It's all the time. It gives Even them credibility wherever they go. Even when you go somewhere to someone's go. house, you pull up to someone's house, go knock on their door, you look out and you see a, uh, a, a, a white F-250 sitting out there. Guy comes knocking on water department. Really? Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay? Understandable. Um, and it's also nice to know where that vehicle goes. I mean, our taxpayers are paying for the fuel, maintenance, insurance. It's the taxpayer's vehicle. It's not their vehicle. See, that's what we all forget. That vehicle belongs to the taxpayers. And, and excuse me, but some people aren't even taxpayers that are taking these vehicles home. And that's what irks me. I'll just come out and say it. What Some of people aren't taxpayers to the city. Oh, not residents. Okay. Okay. So that bothers me. And at one time, I remember five, six years ago, they, you know, city council was was contemplating on taking everybody's vehicle away from them. Okay. All of America goes to work every day with their own vehicles. I did it too. And when I needed to go somewhere, I picked up a pool car and I left, and went on company business with a pool car. Registered miles in, miles out, make sure it had gas in it. I had a gas card, pull up to the pump, use my gas card. We have no checks and balances here. Zero. In the in two, almost three years that I've been here, I have yet to see one, one report of personal use on a vehicle, the miles used on anyone's car. True. Not a one. Councilman Hicks Clayton and 
Mr. Constant have been here a lot longer than me. I'd like to know how many have they've seen in the years they've been here. And, and Mayor, I mean, Madam Chair, Chair I was going to say, this is why I was so strong supporter of um, the fleet fuel management, because I have seen it used. It's very effective. I know police and fire <clears throat> cannot be, they're not eligible. But that way you would have that tracking, because we, we have not seen those reports. We've asked for that, <clears throat> not consistently asked for it, by the way. But, you know, this is important part of the conversation is the accountability factor because it is taxpayers dollars and, and you know and I think it's important that's why I supported the fleet fuel management and we've talked about that for years one of the things for IRS reporting is we all have to that have a vehicle have to report prior IRS purposes personal use versus company use and it's taxable yeah, everybody deducts, you know, like I on my car deduct. But we right. but we've never seen one of those. We can never match miles driven to miles personal use. We never see anything like that. Do we even know how many miles are on the individual vehicles? I don't know. Okay, track. But if it, but with, with with all due respect, I have never asked. So that would be something else I've never asked. Okay? But the question is I shouldn't have to ask. That should be Transparency given on a monthly basis, okay? Because I get asked these questions all the time, and I don't know what to tell people. I don't want to tell people, well, yeah, this guy's using his vehicle for personal uses. He's a rotten scumbag or she's a rotten scum. I don't want to do that, okay? Thing is, if these vehicles were marked, everybody knows where they're at when they see them. Now, I think um, Mr. McIntyre would like to come up to the podium. <clears throat> Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Chief. Chief, check the guy in the green. Looks a little suspicious back there. Oh, no. <clears throat> huh? <laughs> check his ID. <laughs> okay. Holden <laughs> Harmon, At least he's shaving. <laughs> Um, I don't. I don't think the issue is, uh, or at least sounds like the issue is not whether or not we're taking the home, the vehicles home, and using them for work-related things. Uh, before, when I first started here, I would use my own personal vehicle. It was a previous council. I th I'm pretty sure Bob Conson was here, and I know Lisa was on the council at the time. It was a suggestion of the council, some of the council members, that I get a vehicle. For a long time, I drove a, like a used Ranger that was available. In fact. Uh, when Kim Constant got a new vehicle for Parks and Rec, I used that turn-in vehicle. I used that for a, quite a period of time. My particular issue is, I, I agree, during the day, during normal operations, I think, you know, my ordinance vehicles are all marked. They have the biggest lettering on them. I did that intentionally so that people would see them coming. And actually, uh, some of the ordinance officers feel like when they turn a corner, there's a phone tree going on saying ordinances on our block, you know. So that's a good thing. Um, but for me personally, if, if we wanted to put something on it during the day, during normal operations, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Just two, uh, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, I sat in front of a house waiting for someone who had left an abandoned dog in their backyard. I sat out there for two hours. Now, normally the procedure is, is that I get a call from PD. They say there's a, a problem with an animal. We need assistance. And, you know, I, I come in, for, I call somebody in to come in. But what I typically like to do is get there first. If I've got one guy who's coming from Wyandotte, I've got another guy who's coming from the other end of uh, Melvindale. So it takes them a while to come and get our marked animal truck and then show up on the scene. Sometimes it's 20 to 30 minutes before they can respond and get to that scene. Sometimes we don't have 20 to 30 minutes, especially if it's a dog that's aggressive or uh, in this case, it was a dog that was uh, grossly, uh, had been abandoned there. And uh, from what we understood is the people were coming at a certain time during the night to feed it. I wanted to have that conversation with them and say, look, this isn't acceptable to have the dog out, even if you show up once a day to feed it. So, you know, when I when I caught the guy dumping the grease, it was in an un, you know unidentified vehicle. I parked off to the side and I watched him do it. I feel like if he had seen my vehicle marked, he probably wouldn't have been dumping and we wouldn't have caught him that particularly do, during that day doing it. So I, I, I don't, all my vehicles are marked. Um, I think that's important. They also all have uniforms, which I think is important to identify them. They all wear a badge and they all have an ID. Um, but I'm not showing up at someone's door at 10 o'clock at night and, and asking, can I read their meter? 
I'm, I'm usually being called out by the police department because something critical is happening typically with an animal. Many of you have called me on the weekends when it's related to a tree being cut down or a, or a structure being built. The minute I go by the street, all the saws stop. But I can park at the end of the block in my unmarked truck or untagged uh, truck, and I can sit there and I can see things that are happening. So for me personally, I, I will tell you that if, if, if this happens, I probably will start using my own personal vehicle again for those purposes. During the day, you know, I should be marked. And if I'm out in the field and I'm doing uh, inspections along with the ordinance officers. But I think that uh, for the investigative part of it, I, I, I don't think people give us a lot of credit for what we do. <laughs> You know, we don't, we're not, we're not, we don't have guns. I'm not saying that guns is always the answer, but guns definitely, you know, uh, give the police officers a little bit of a different edge than what we have. Fire department, they show up on the scene and everybody loves them. But ordinance, you know, we're not always popular. In fact, we had someone just last week in court, if Gary was here, he'd be able to tell you that, um, I actually told the officers, I said, we're not going to that house ever again unless we have police protection with us because, and we're starting to get more and more of those. Our, our, our repertoire of these flagged homes, in the system there's a flag that uh, the officers, when they key in an address, there could be a potential red flag across the top of the property. I will tell you, we're getting more and more and more of them. I've had officers in the last couple of weeks chase to their vehicles uh, because they're putting something on the door that says you need to you know, get rid of your abandoned vehicle in the driveway. So. Um, during the day, I still am a believer. I think they should be marked. They should have any, everything they could have possibly to identify themselves. But I'm on call 365 days a year. I literally don't get a day off. I take vacations, but I'm still on call. I'm still taking phone calls. I don't have a deputy. I don't have an office manager. I'm literally doing it all by myself when it comes to that part of it. So for that reason, I, you know, I would humbly request that you not you have make nobody that you could put on call other than yourself? Well, if I had to, I'd have to negotiate into a contract because they're all union employees. I, I, Michelle is, a, is, a, is the office person. I don't, I don't have a deputy. It's just me. So I'd have to negotiate something into the contract in order to put her I, on. I still don't see how a, a symbol on a vehicle stops you from doing your job, even if it's on a tailgate, Dearborn Heights Ordinance Officer. Actually, I think it gives you credibility. Tonight I had a vehicle sitting in front of my house for 15 minutes, and I was kind of leery. I didn't want to go outside and leave because of it. Had it said something like ordinance, i say, okay, they're here for something else. I'm okay, I'm safe. Well, typically, It's not just somebody case in the neighborhood, because you, know, you can give that typically, impression too. Typically what I do is, if I am doing an investigation like with this animal, by the way, we did end up taking the animal, it was abandoned, it was grossly underweight, it's, it's at the shelter now, and hopefully tomorrow the uh, ABAN period of time is over and it, it'll be able to be adopted, but, um, I was really trying to find out who these people were because from what everyone was telling me in the neighborhood they were showing up around 10, 10.30 at night so I just went there on my own time obviously I don't get paid for it and I sat out there. What I do do is I call the dispatch and I let them know. I'm in my vehicle if anybody calls you can let them know that it's you know that the ordinance department is is looking into a, an animal investigation so we do investigations like I said I do it 365 days a year um, Initially, I was using my own vehicle. Um, it's not even about mileage reimbursement. It's about wear and tear on your vehicle. You'll never really get a you never get a really proper exchange on that. You're, you know, you beat up your vehicle just because of uh, how much you use it. A in a year and a half, I still am probably only at about 12,000 miles on the truck. Fortunately for the city and for myself, I live three minutes away. The final question is, what would be the problem with it being marked and sitting in my driveway? A lot of people, even on my own block, don't know what I do or where I, where I work, and I would prefer to keep it that way. I, I mentioned it to you once before. I've had PPOs against residents that have things have not gone well. I had one that part of a probationary uh, requirement is that uh, that person could have no contact with me, either in person, on social media, or in city hall. They weren't allowed to come near me. These things are happening all the time. I've had packages left on my door. I, I don't want to be. I don't want. Even today, when I was going home from work. I saw the headlights, they turned, they followed me. I, go, I went a different way coming home, they still followed me. They followed me into my neighborhood. I did a couple round of blocks, I, they kept following me. I, I know that I'm being followed as it is, so I, I would like to not bring more attention Pe to that. People up here have the same problem. And we all have the same problem. Just this past week, I had to make a police report with someone who's disgruntled because 
I'm not doing enough with the newspapers that are left on people's driveways, okay? I had to make a police report. Right. I had to have the police come out to my house. I had to look at my video cameras. Okay? Right. So your vehicle isn't marked, with all due respect. So my, that's what I'm saying. You, you, so we, we have that same a, issue. I, Everyone I, knows where we but live. But even though I it agree. comes with the job, though, I guess, if you don't want a vehicle that's marked, then you want me to go, quit? No, well, I don't no. Want transfer to, quit, to a different come on. position. I mean, but it sounded like. I, I don't, I, you know, <laughs> and, and that's it's, why. It's just like the police department. The they know they're going to be. The original motion that was passed, and my concern particularly is and the safety you can say what you can what you want but the fact of the matter is when you walk and it and it just happened uh, chief Gavin uh, former chief Gavin but a guy that the police department rescued confronted me as I came out of the car but I know you've been confronted in the same way right and quite frankly uh, more and more I'm fortunate to have three other vehicles, and I've been driving the other vehicles because that one really scared me. And he spent two years in Jackson. I don't want to talk about it too much because you don't know who listens to the programs. Right. But I didn't know who this person is, and and a lot of our employees are being confronted for so. And I think part of it, you you guys won't like this, but the fact of the matter is, these council meetings are a lot of times very hostile, and we're starting to watch the residents approach us that work in this building in a hostile way. Um, one of the guys is, uh, you guys all know very well, I don't want to mention his name, but in fact, guess. Uh, you indicated to me we were locking the door because of him. Mm -hmm. And he's ha been hanging around my house. Yeah. And so you end up with situations, uh, and then the third one, a man was very mad. This all happened in the last month. I'm just talking about the last month. A guy that's very angry on, on uh, and I've got Dan Brooks going out there on a, many occasions on a water line improvement in a section of the city. And he's mad that they didn't put the grass back in right. They didn't do this correct. And the last time he showed up, I had, we called, I was in HR, and we had to call the, uh, the police officer was that we have in City Hall and uh, he ran out of here real quick, but the amount of threats that come in, emails, I, I'm surprised that people will write. And you probably get the same things. I mean, these are, these are not, you don't know whether to take them serious or not. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. Um, and, and I agree, you know, safety is a very important issue. My family as well has been threatened You've with other things. We've had one recently, too. We've had a lot of, you know, we know it's really unfortunate. It yeah. should not be that way. Yes. However, I know that I would not stop what I do or try to do for the community because it's that important to serve and to do what's best. Um, I don't think anybody, by the way, should ever be threatened. However, I'm just going to say real quick, um, people who want or desire to make a threat against you or act out against you or find you, I don't think it matters if your vehicle is marked or not. They will. I, I, you know, I, they I, will, yeah, unfortunately. They don't care. They're going to go to that. And that's when we call our police and thank you because they've been fabulous with uh, police reports and other things. Um, it's unfortunate that's how it is. And real quick on the, like, you mentioned the firefighters, and I, I just want to share. My son, before he was with E-Course, as a firefighter, he was with Detroit Rescue. And again, I don't believe this should ever be the case, but every single time in Detroit, do you know they have to call typically the police to go in before them? They have to sit and wait yep. 20 minutes or more before they can go rescue somebody's baby, somebody's loved one, to help them. And that's unfortunate because that's where we are today. Well, let me, if I can just tell you, I... I, 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 I I have a really, uh, I think, a strong argument for while, why I'm doing my investigative part of my job, why it's important not to have a marked vehicle. Even today, we we're at this particular house. We obtained a court order to go into this house because uh, another situation with abandonment, uh, they had left, we thought, multiple cats in the house. They've been gone for almost three weeks. Uh, we've been sneaking food in through a cracked window. And um, so we got our, a search warrant to go in. We were able to, and it turns out it was only one cat that was living. And um, we were able to take the cat to the rescue. But within literally 10 minutes of us being there, everyone showed up. Because interestingly enough, all the people in that neighborhood that were probably complaining, and I appreciate them getting in touch with us, I think also had a lot of these people's cell phone numbers. <laughs> 
because the owner showed up, the landlord showed up, the cousin of the cousin of the person that owned the, the cat showed up. Everybody was there uh, literally 10 minutes after we left. So I know that a lot of people network. Similar to what I said, when an ordinance car turns a corner, the phones start ringing and saying, hey, they're on our street, you know, move your cans or do whatever the case is. So if I am out there, uh, that's my biggest part of it, is that we, I'm finding that we're doing a lot more of this lately. Uh, it's unfortunate, but we are, where we're having to try to, uh, you know, in order for us to prosecute something, we have to see it happen. You know, it's almost impossible to go based on uh, hearsay or whatever, so. Okay, yeah. thank you. What, what, I, what I'm getting Councilman at it is. Constant. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I can say personally with Director McIntyre, I took over a case from George Borgel, the former city attorney, and the, the uh, person uh, lives in Irish Hills, works for Ford, works midnights, and is in a uh, bitter dispute with his brother over an estate, but he's just, he's out of his mind angry. And he, he out of control angry, even with me. And and uh, I can think of a couple situations where yeah, that's very upset. volatile. Uh, 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 you know, yeah, no, I, I want to know where he lives. I'm gonna, I want to get him. But I'm getting out of this. Must get. What I'm getting out of this, it's only the directors don't want their vehicles marked, but everybody else, they could have a marked and. Everybody else can go after them. No, that's not what I said. If well, you heard but that's the, what it's. I, but I, let me tell you the very first thing. I never thing, said that you said it. What I'm, I'm getting the feeling. But I don't want people to have that impression of me. The very first thing I said was during normal operations, I'm all for it. If that's what you want it to well, do. What would happen if, a, if one of your understudies they had to go out there with a vehicle? They, they wouldn't, not at, for that purpose, not at night, they wouldn't be doing Why? that. Well, at night, too, you really can't see the writing on it anyways until you get right on top of it. You, you guys, I, I'm just offering my opinion. Okay. You're, you're going right. to make you. your own decision, uh, but I will tell you this. If it involves an investigation, I'm going to use my own vehicle and I'm going to submit the, the, the mileage. It's, 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 and and you're entitled it to. It won't work any other way. And, really and you're won't. entitled to. What, what I really, if you're going to go to this, I think you need to put an account in for mileage because I think a lot of the mm -hmm. individuals are going to want to at least reimburse them for city thing and they'll be required to report. But mm -hmm. uh, okay. in essence, this, the, the threats and everything else that are coming about are just about ready to end all, these, uh, all of us having the vehicles. It's just getting too dangerous out there. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's already done. If you use your own vehicle, you get to claim mileage, correct? Yeah. I don't we, know. We don't have. We, we don't that? have to write anything special. <clears throat> well, there needs to be an account. We sure. don't have an account for mileage that I'm aware of. The only one that has it is the treasurer. Maybe on your taxes. But it also goes both ways. If they're, they've been using some of these vehicles for personal, anyways, and we don't have any accountability for that. Right. So I mean, how are we handling that now? You're reporting it to the IRS. Yep. Okay. So how do you? So the, so it's the IRS that's it, that's reimbursing you. No. Well, so then what account is it coming don't from? We reimburse the, uh, we have to pay tax on personal use of the vehicle. Okay, but who's paying for the, then the fuel, the maintenance, and all of that that goes along using it for the, personal the, uses? The city uh, pays for it, but we have to pay the IRS because it's considered when you use the vehicle for personal use, it is a benefit, it's a taxable income. I, and, and I'm not, you know, and you're completely right, but as a resident, I take exemption that I have to pay for somebody using a vehicle yeah. for personal use. And I, I mean, that's understand all. understand that, Councilman, but one of the things is you cut the department head salaries, you take the vehicles away. But this you is, this is I'm never, I'm never, this I'm is never, not. I've never said anything about taking the vehicles away. Okay, at this no point, we're getting off that. the, at this point, we're getting off the subject. Yeah. Councilwoman Hicks Clayton. The last thing, um, and I agree, no one's talking about taking vehicles away, but Councilman Muscat made a, a good s suggestion, I think, possibly for your scenario, is the tailgate you know, labeling it across there, where it's not so, you know, popping out, yet is identifiable by, from behind, you know what I mean? Where I understand your concern too, with the investigation and that aspect in nighttime, but I think it's a tailgate right across the back like that. It's not, you know what I mean? You're not gonna be so standing out like a sore thumb in those situations, possibly. I thought that was a good suggestion. Okay, any other comment before we end this? We got public comment coming up. Okay, <clears throat> does anybody from the public want to come up and comment? Please step up. You have three minutes. Name, address.
Good evening, Zuhair Abdul Haq, 354 Rosemary. Uh, I think we should be very proud to drive the cars with our logo of our city on it. We should be proud to let everybody know that we are employed by the city of Dearborn Heights. And I believe from safety point, the safety of our employees with cars marked outweigh the cars without marking on them. Because the thief, when he sees even any car with mark on it, its official car, they will flee, uh, you know, fled the, 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 the scene. And any violation going on, especially the ordinance department, it's not going to happen that it disappears in a minute or two. If somebody pour in cement or cut in the trees or doing something, it's going to take long time. It will give the department or the person who's going there to watch, it will give them enough time you know, to watch the violation. So I hope you consider you know, what is right, and I believe marking those cars, excluding the police cars, is something good for the safety of our employees and the benefit of our residents. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Name, address, and three minutes, please. My name is Christina Kramars. Um, Laszlo, I live on um, Charlesworth Street. I think council and some of the residents haven't taken into account that certain departments have a different level of safety. Uh, emergency management, CDBG, um, it, even some of the other public safety departments don't have the type of exposure that DPW director on um, ordinance director and the mayor does o other cities actually have a dedicated police officer with their salary to drive a mayor around they're not marked um, some of you have gone to different conferences they're not marked and they're not marked for safety a and to say that somebody's going to stay away because it's marked is not true because we have police cars and other cars that are violated or i'm sorry vandalized because they show that they're the city of Dearborn Heights. Uh, whether it's political or not, I, I, I don't care if it was Mayor Paleco or Mayor Canfield, the mayor's cars should not be marked. Whatever the, even the building director, director goes out, he doesn't do the type of confrontational work that a DPW director does or an ordinance director. It, it's confrontational, it, it's volatile, and you're putting these people's lives in danger. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, at this time, we're going to end our study session. Next, we will be moving to a closed study session where the public would not be allowed. Who's that?